Johnny Rutherford in the pace car. He pulls down, coming out of turn number four. Pippa Mann jumps out in front, and they're going to wave off the start. Pippa Mann got a jump on the start, so we are going to wave it off and line up two by two again one more time. Good call. She got a jump, and she was nosed in front before they even got through turn number four. The last couple of races, though, that looks like the alignment off the final turn to, uh, the final turn to start the green flag lap and lap one of the IndyCar series. I, I've, I've been a little surprised at the fact that we have gone green the last couple of times the IndyCar series has raced because that's exactly what the alignment looks like when they come down the straightaway to take the green flag. It's been the first three or four cars have been single file and I, I just like to see those rows of two by two I like to see them bunched up. But you know uh, race control makes that call. If the pole sitter takes off and the rest of the field chooses not to go then I, I guess that's their fault and, and, and the person on the pole is going to get the advantage. Here we go again, and once again, Pippa Man will jump out in front as they come through turn number four, and we are green at Kentucky Speedway. Into turn number one, Pippa Man to the bottom of the racetrack, and again, uh, these events are notorious. These Firestone Indy Lights events are notorious for drivers starting from the pole and winning. That did not happen last time at Chicagoland, but the three prior races, that's exactly what happened. Martin Plowman has Pippa Man in his crosshairs as they roar out of turn number four. It's about three car lengths as we come close to completing the first of 67 laps. Now up to four car lengths at the line for Martin Plowman. A big gap back to J.K. Vernay running in the third position. James Hincliffe has already worked his way up to fourth. Charlie Kim plus fifth. And Dan Clark, Adrian Campos Jr., Brandon Wagner, Ari Leindyke Jr., and Philip Major as they head down the back stretch. And Hinchcliffe with a battle for third. He is nosing in front of J.K. Vernay, and they'll go side by side for a bit. Those two are friends, but you wouldn't know it on the racetrack. I mean, they are constantly beating and banging on one another. It seems race after race after race, they are stuck together. Turn four, big crash. A couple of cars collected, they slam into the outside retaining wall. One car might be Ari Leyendijk Jr. Also, we see Daniel Harrington, so there's a third car. Harrington is still heading towards turn number one with the front left wheel askew. So three cars are involved. One of them is Philip Major. The other is Stefan Wilson, so it is not Leyendijk Jr., another dark-colored car. So we have a yellow on lap number two of 67, just completing lap number two. All of the cars will head down the pit lane because there is debris scattered around turn number four. So we'll watch and see some of the drivers climb out of their cars. We see Stefan Wilson has already emerged from his car. We see Daniel Harrington still making it around with the, uh, the field. He is on the back stretch, and I'm not sure he's going to make it all the way around because the front left wheel is up next to his helmet on top of the side pod. And we see the third driver involved, Philip Major, is still seated in the cockpit with the Maltro safety crew talking with him in the cockpit. That car is destroyed, and this race will, for the second week in a row, have a red flag. Cars coming down pit lane, and they will be parked as we complete lap number three of 67. Well, Pippa Mann and Martin Plowman did not get to the pit entry lane. And now, as we take a look at the, the replay, we caught the, the, the tail end of it as Stefan Wilson's car hits the out, top, outside retaining wall and launches back to the inside of the racetrack. But uh, now Martin Plowman is making his way back around the racetrack. He and Pippa Mann both failed to make it to the pen, pit entry lane. And so uh, Pippa now is on pit road, and Martin Plowman will be there shortly. Okay, we'll keep our eyes on Philip Major down in the turn four area to make sure he gets out of that car. And Jake Query reports from pit lane that he was moving. Here's what happened. Uh, the car spun first. Stefan Wilson's car, I believe, is the one that spun first. And then Harrington collected him and Major as well. So I want to see that one more time, but I believe that it was Stefan Wilson's car that spun first by itself. So it was not contact with cars running by side, side by side. And then the two trailing cars made the contact. So three already outs. And our leader is going to be the uh, 11 car of Pippa Man. Okay, she's shown on timing and scoring at 11, but she has been leading. And as Mark mentioned, she uh, just uh, missed the, the pit entrance, and she took one more lap around. So she'll be moved back to the front of the field. So we'll keep an eye on this cleanup. And while we do, let's head to pit row with Jake Query. Sebastian Saavedra, an interested spectator here, and of course has a podium finish from a year ago. We thought we'd see you in that number 29 machine, Sebastian. Take us through the decision and why we don't see you racing this weekend. Well, 
it's a tough decision to make, you know, it's something that, uh, of course, as a driver, you don't want to ever to do. It uh, came to, well, lots of things uh, coming from this season and uh, that we were not very happy until this race. We saw exactly what I, I didn't want it to, to be in my position when uh, my teammates and uh, Danny Harrington crashed. I'm really sad for them, uh, but I'm just... Uh, happy that I was not in that position. What did you see that just happened on the racetrack that you think possibly is something that you found could be a possibility? Our car was just too dangerous to drive. Uh, we made a decision yesterday to, that I was not going to race because I didn't want that to happen to me. And uh, that's why they put Daniel and well, it's like exactly what happened. Like uh, I see Stefan losing the car by himself from a not very handling car. And uh, I'm really, really sorry for these guys. What does this mean for your future in the Firestone Indy Lights and your relationship with Brian Herta? I think I'm very thankful for these guys to, to give me the great opportunities like doing the 500 and everything. It uh, doesn't mean anything for my future. I think uh, our future is still bright and uh, being 20 gives me a lot of opportunities to keep going. We're looking forward to IndyCar racing and then that's, uh, that's our future, IndyCar. So Brian Herta, the relationship, as far as you are concerned, the relationship with him professionally is okay? It is. Uh, I, I, I really... I like him as a, as a boss and everything. It did not happen for us uh, for Indy Lights, but it doesn't mean anything. We're great people and uh, we continue doing our best uh, for our future as an IndyCar team and, and driver. All right, Sebastian Saavedra, best of luck to you on what, how everything works out. Thank you, guys. All right, that is Sebastian Saavedra, guys. First half of the season went pretty well for Sebastian Saavedra. Had a couple of podiums, including a first place uh, winning from the pole at Iowa. He finished third at Barber and fourth at Long Beach. Last couple of races, uh, struggles for Sebastian Saavedra. Finishing 15th at Infineon, involved in uh, some contact there, and finished 11th at Chicagoland. That was uh, coming off back-to-back uh, -to -back top 10 finishes at both Edmonton and Mid-Ohio. He made 26 Firestone Indy Lights starts, has three wins and three poles, 13 top fives and 18 top tens. He's led seven times for 275 laps. And, and, and boy, how quickly fortunes can change because it wasn't all that long ago, Kevin, uh, that we had the opportunity to talk to Brian Herta. And uh, he was awfully excited about the relationship that uh, had developed between he and Sebastian Saavedra. And, uh, he was the guy that, uh, that that they had put in place to get through the Firestone Indy Lights this series, this season, uh, series this season, and then get ready to go IZOD IndyCar racing full time with Sebastian Saavedra in 2011. But uh, how quickly things can change! And there are always two sides to every story. One side would be it's not a good idea to quit on race day, to step out of the car like that. And I would think sever that relationship with a potential car owner. But when you look at it from Sebastian Saavedra's side, as he talked about, if he feels, if a driver feels like you have no opportunity to win the race or be competitive, then only bad things can happen. Only a crash or uh, a poor result. And if you talk about a crash, then you're talking about not only the possibility of injuring yourself, but uh, sometimes the drivers are responsible for the crash damage as well, so you have to consider how are you using your assets. So, again, always two sides to that story. And as uh, Sebastian said, he, he saw it the same way that I did. I wanted to see that replay a second time, but it, it was accurate that Stefan Wilson did spin first, and then the other two cars coming through were collected. Philip Major and Daniel Harrington was Stefan Wilson's teammate, and Major did get out of the car. I'm told under his own power, Jake Query is headed to the infield care center, and we'll uh, hope to hear from these drivers coming up in just a little bit. We are red at Kentucky Speedway for Firestone Indy Lights, the Drive Smart Buckle Up Kentucky 100. Uh, lap 3 of 67 is complete. Attention Indy Downforce and IndyCar Nation members, your code word for the Firestone Indy Lights race from Kentucky is IZOD. Please go to your IndyCar Nation homepage and click on the Earn Points section and then enter the secret word under the radio portion and you will receive 400 points. The code word is IZOD. Thanks for listening to live internet coverage of the Firestone Indy Lights race from Kentucky. Jake Averne currently runs third in that number seven, Lucas Oil, Sam Schmidt Motorsports entry. He can uh, wrap up uh, Sam Schmidt's third Lights Championship in five years. Uh, he's already clinched Series Rookie of the Year honors. He leads the championship, as we said earlier, by 53 points over Hinch. And uh, all he has to do is finish third or better today. So uh, J.K. Vernay, uh, as Kevin uh, mentioned, uh, has had some issues this weekend at Kentucky. But, uh, Kevin, for a guy that seemed to uh, struggle mightily at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway back in May, 
uh, and seemed uh, to, to not have a tremendous amount of of confidence when he talked about uh, racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He, he ran a very effective race of the Firestone Indy Lights uh, race, the Firestone Freedom 100. Uh, ran a very safe race, brought the car home in one piece. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, whatever fears he may have had or uh, intimidation that he may have felt about being on an oval, uh, he's been able to, to put that by the wayside because he ran very well at Chicagoland Speedway. And he also did at Iowa Speedway. He finished right. third at Iowa, fourth at Chicago. So I think it's just a conservative approach to try to get better and get comfortable. And while he has uh, essentially been in control of the championship most of the season, that's one thing that he needs to show potential IZOD IndyCar Series owners is that he can be competitive on the oval. So I would think as as much as he feels like things are in hand at this point and he can wrap up the championship here today, uh, I would think he'd really love to get a win on the ovals with two more remaining, including this one, Homestead, to wrap up the season the first weekend of October. If he can do that, win one of these two races on an oval, he has to feel like he's done everything that he can to show that he's ready to move to the IZOD IndyCar Series and he's uh, very confident. I've talked to him throughout the season. He's been very confident that he is going to have an offer and is not going to have to bring a big check to get to IndyCar next season. And, and we might want to make mention in, in, in J.K. Bernays' defense, uh, he would not be the first driver that uh, felt in awe of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway upon not only seeing it for the first time, but actually racing on it the first time. Ovals can be intimidating for drivers who have... Uh, who've never been on them, much the same way a road and street circuit can be somewhat daunting for a driver that has cut his teeth on ovals, be they, they pavement or dirt. But um, uh, certainly J.K. Vernet, as Kevin alluded to, uh, after some of the quote-unquote struggles he had at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in May, rebounded nicely and ran very well at Iowa and uh, has done very well on, on the ovals that we've raced on since. The 29 car of Daniel Harrington in the William Rast colors is now on the hook. It did not limp all the way around back to pit lane with that front left uh, wheel up in the air and uh, sitting askew on top of the side pod right next to the cockpit. It's on the hook now. Uh, the other two cars, the 28 and the 49, are behind the wall. They have been collected. And we've got a lot of oil dry on the track, still safety trucks, but the Maltro safety crew uh, it does a remarkable job every week of getting things cleaned up in a sufficient, safe, and very quick manner. Back to Pit Road with Jake Query. Just wanted to update, all three drivers involved in that incident right now are being checked out at the University of Kentucky Healthcare Enfield Care Center here at the Kentucky Speedway. The good news, Daniel Harrington walked in under his own power. He didn't even get a ride. He just went ahead and walked in from where he is. Brian Herta is in with both of his, his drivers as well, and then Philip Major, of course, is inside being looked at. So we will try to get a word with them as soon as they come out, guys, but wanted to update all three drivers being checked out at this time. James Hinchcliffe currently running in the uh, the top five, and Hinchcliffe is looking to pick up a $5,000 repeat bonus. It's uh, from the title sponsor for the series, uh, Firestone, if he wins back-to-back -back and takes home the checkered flag at tonight's Drive Smart Buckle Up Kentucky 100. He'll get that $5,000 bonus. It's been claimed twice this year. We told you earlier, J.K. Vernay went back-to-back -back at St. Pete and Barber to open the season. And uh, Ed Watkins, Glenn, and Toronto. Uh, Junior Strauss, who won both races in St. Petersburg in 2009, the only other driver to claim the award. It was instituted prior to the 2008 season. Um, just uh, one more race left on the Firestone and Delights Series schedule. IZOD IndyCar Series with a couple of events left after tonight's uh, event. Uh, the IZOD IndyCar Series, of course, will visit Twin Ring Motegi uh, later on this month of September. And then, uh, of course, the final race of the 2010 season for both the Firestone Indy Lights and the IZOD IndyCar Series comes up uh, the first weekend in October at the beautiful Homestead Miami Speedway. Some news in IndyCars for that Motegi race. Roger Yasakawa, a veteran who has uh, raced part-time for the last several years, but has been involved for the last eight years. He was named to the 36 car for Conquest Racing that Thomas Schechter has piloted the last couple of weeks. So Yasakawa, who has been spotting for Takuma Sato all season and has been around the series, he will be back in the car coming up in a couple of weeks. And we look forward to uh, seeing what happens at Motegi and then at Homestead to wrap up the season as we look forward to the IZOD IndyCar event Coming up tonight, we have a brand new first time pole sitter. Ed Carpenter walked away, missing out on his first win here last year by just a few feet. 
tonight. He will get a jump start. He will start on the inside of row one next to eight-time pole sitter Will Power. And right behind him, Ed Carpenter's teammate Dan Weldon with Panther Racing starting in the third spot. So obviously it's not a fluke that Ed Carpenter is starting up front. Uh, not a fluke here, certainly. Uh, Ed's always raced well here. Came within an eyelash of winning here a year ago to get his first eyes out IndyCar Series win. Uh, finished on the podium. And, uh, you know, to, to, to say that... Uh, uh, that that Ed Carpenter knows how to find the fast way around this racetrack is a bit of an understatement. I mean, he has proven that this year and has proven that this year. In fact, uh, let's do a little bit of a rewind while we still have a couple of minutes left. It, it was a memorable, memorable race at Kentucky Speedway a year ago. And as we said, Ed Carpenter, your pole sitter, almost ended up at the top of the podium. Let's hit the rewind button and relive the last couple of laps at Kentucky Speedway one year ago. A near dead heat. Did Briscoe lose, use his last push? He didn't, but Carpenter, yes. Briscoe is out of overtake pushes. Mark James. Carpenter has two left. They're in the back straight. In front by a wheel at the midway point of the back straightaway. Briscoe comes storming back. They almost touch in the set of a turn number three. Ed Carpenter to the bottom. Briscoe to the high side in four. Carpenter and Briscoe will race to the white line. This is the final lap of the Meyer Indy 300. Carpenter on the low side. Briscoe on the high side. Mark James in turn one for the final time. Ed's going to need to pedal hard to beat him off of turn number four. Castro Nevis and Kanat are side by side by them. Mike, it's been a while since we've said it. Get the cameras out for a photo finish. They're setting up for turn four for the final time. Ed Carpenter has one more overtake push left off of turn number four. They'll move to the high side. Here comes Carpenter side by side with Briscoe. Briscoe got him. Briscoe by a nose at the line will win it by 16 thousandths of a second in an incredible finish. And we had another one like that last week That's at Chicagoland, right. <laughs> not only in the IZOD IndyCar Series, but also in Firestone Indy Lights. We've had great finishes at Kentucky Speedway in both series, and we're hoping for a couple of more here late this afternoon and this evening. We are about set to uh, refire engines, and we are going to go green again in just uh, a couple of minutes. And let's go back down to uh, near the infield care center with Jay Query. Daniel Harrington, I know that that's not how you wanted the day to end so soon, but the good news is you're smiling. You look to be okay. Tell me what happened. Yeah, well, we just got off to a conservative start, wanted to kind of get a few laps under our belt before I kind of uh, started moving forward. And unfortunately, we start at the back, everything that happens is in front of you. Uh, and I think Phil Major spun in front of us and didn't have anywhere to go around him. Unfortunately, both teammates got taken out because of it. Um, really tough day. I, mean, I was real happy that Brian gave me the shot to get back in the car and sorry to kind of let him down like that. but. And you still have a job to do tonight, correct? Yeah, and now i got to go spot for Mr. Baguette, so uh, hopefully I'll keep him clear of all the wrecks out there. I know it's disappointing, but good to see you're okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, that's Daniel Harrington. Stephen Wilson, looked like a hard hit from your end. Take me through what you saw and what happened. Yeah, no, um, I was just kind of taking it easy the first couple of laps. You know, we didn't have a, a strong car in practice, uh, so we were just trying to look after the car and just feed myself, ease my way into the race and uh, started working on the car a little bit and then, Next thing I know, coming out of three, uh, coming out forward, there was a car already spun in front of and up ahead. I tried to avoid it, but I'd got the 29 car on the high side of me, and I just had nowhere to go. You know, I tried to go low and uh, just clip the front end, and that was the end of my race. Sebastian had essentially told me that part of the reason he didn't want to run is because he had concerns about the setup. Was that a concern of yours? Um, You'll have to, have to talk to Brian about that. I, I'm not going to talk about what Brian, uh, what Sebastian said or you know what Sebastian's concerns were. You know, uh, we had a difficult weekend and we we're just trying to make the car as, as as good as it could be. And uh, we knew the race was, was going to be difficult for my end. And uh, you know, it's still only my fourth oval, so we're just trying to you know keep learning. And uh, you know, my aim this season was just to run every every lap on the oval, just to get as much experience for next year as possible. And uh, unfortunately, today. Uh, this is a big blow. Glad to see you're OK, though. That's, right. That's Stephen Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, answering the question without answering the question. Which is the way you need to do it. Absolutely. Because he may have a good relationship with Sebastian Zavadra. It doesn't want to, to, uh, to conflict what he's saying. But his boss and possibly his friend, Brian Herta, is on the other side of things. So let them deal with it. It is not my issue. So and to clarify, uh, we just saw one look at the replay, so according to what Stefan says, and, and I have no reason not to trust him, I'm sure he's accurate, it was Philip Major that spun, so it was not Wilson, 
that spun first. So that would take away the theory that the BHI cars couldn't be handled tonight and they were out of control. They simply were collecting. This had nothing to do with handling cars. When there's a car parked in front of you on the racetrack and it spins uh, tenths of a second in front of you, you don't have much of an opportunity. But Stefan Wilson's response might take you back that way just a little bit. <laughs> it's probably safe to say the cars were not handling the way they would like them to handle. Which Sebastian happens. Saavedra missed the, the practice and the qualifying yesterday because of electrical problems and it was dead last in the warm-up yesterday and uh, Stefan Wilson in this race uh, started in the 10th position and, and only out qualified one that did qualify and that was Rodrigo Barbosa. Well, so mean, it's not been a good weekend for BHN. Well, and you know what? Uh, you, you, they could come back here in two weeks and, and have the field cover. I mean, qualify top five. Uh, you, you know, it happens. It happens in the eyes on IndyCar series. How many times this year have we seen Andretti Autosport struggle in qualifying and have great race cars? And it should be pointed out that they have won a race this year. Sebastian right. Saavedra won a right. race at Iowa. Okay, yep. we are ready to go again. Cars are lined up. Single file, getting ready to restart, working on lap number five of 67. And Pippa Man with the lead, but breaking to the outside. Martin Plowman, Mark, is going to go side by side into one. Nice slingshot on a turn number four in the 27 machine for Martin Plowman. They go side by side, almost touch wheels at the midway point between one and two. Pippa Man taking the short way around the racetrack. The car's stuck to the bottom, glued to that white line. Now Plowman will tuck in right behind her. Hinscliffe grabs the third spot. Now Plowman dances to the outside through turn number four. Charlie Kimball is backing up a little bit. He restarted in the fifth position. He's lost a couple of spots as they come around turn number four on the straightaway. Pippa Man by a car link. Martin Plowman will inch up a little bit more. Look to the outside coming around turn number one. Hinchcliffe is five car links back. Then they are side by side for the fourth position. It's J.K. Vernet and Dan Clark. They worked side by side in the final practice session yesterday for quite some time. It's man up front, five car links in front of Martin Plowman. Best battle on the racetrack night right now is the battle for fourth. That is Dan Clark taking on J.K. Bernay. Clark weaves around to the outside. That blue number 40 machine goes to the outside of the black and white number seven Lucas Oil machine. They start to go side by side through turn number one, but for now, Bernay has the advantage to the bottom of the racetrack as they slide down the banking of the exit of two. 11 cars remaining in the field. It's Mann, Plowman, Hinchcliffe, Renee, Clark, Wagner, Kimball, Yakuman, Campos Jr., Leyendijk, and Barbosa. 1 through 11. Getting set to complete lap number 8. And Pippa Mann has really extended her advantage now. At the stripe, she's in front of Martin Plowman by nearly a second. James Hinchcliffe he is just a couple of tenths back. He's now chasing Martin Plowman, and we're going to have a battle pretty soon for second place. Ari Leyendijk Jr. got a bit out of sorts that last lap. He lost a spot to Adrian Campos Jr. Campos Jr., that yellow and white machine, identical to his teammate James Hinchcliffe, who currently runs in third. Leyendijk piloting that number, number 24 machine. That's Alliance Motorsports and former Firestone Indy Lights and Izod IndyCar veteran Tice Carlson, part of the ownership group there. Back up front, Pippa Mann working lap number 10 has a huge lead as she sets tail down the back straightaway over Martin Plowman, James Hinchcliffe, and J.K. Vernay. And now Martin Plowman makes up a little bit of ground. Hinchcliffe had pulled within a car link, but as they head to turn number three, Plowman is back in front. Three car links for that number two position. It's Pippa Mann by a wide margin. Then Martin Plowman, two car lengths in front of James Hinchcliffe, another five back to the points leader, J.K. Bernay, who only needs to finish third today to wrap up the championship. Dan Clark runs fifth. Brandon Wagner had a good run going most of the race last week at Chicagoland, runs sixth. Then Charlie Kimball, Gustavo Jacobin, Adrian Campos Jr., Ari Leyendijk Jr., and Rodrigo Barbosa. J.K. Bernay out of the 552 laps competed this season he has completed 546 of them so only six laps off the pace has been jk renee hinchcliffe some 30 laps behind him that helps to explain the five race wins to the three for james hinchcliffe hinchcliffe has the advantage in polls from four to three top five finishes nine for Vernay, eight for Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe and Vernay tied with top 10 finishes, 10 apiece. J.K. way in front in terms of laps led. He's led 172. He's also in front in terms of races led with five. So Kevin, that rookie of the year, uh, potential series champion, knocking on the door of that. Uh, J.K. Vernay has just had a masterful season. Hinch has not had a bad year, but it pales in comparison to the season that J.K. Vernay has put together for Sam Smith Motorsports. At this point, what James Hinchcliffe can do is what he did last week. Gather attention and show his abilities by winning races. The championship is uh, almost certainly out of the question, but if he can get another win or two this season, certainly another win, 
to get him up to four. That would be a, a big mark in his resume. And Hinchcliffe now is trying to pull up beside Martin Plowman. Battle for second as Pippa Man continues to dominate. Martin Plowman has the advantage right now, but they are gearbox to front wing, and Hinchcliffe on the outside is going to try to pull up beside him going into three. Usually they can get a good run at the exit of turn number four, get a little bit of a slingshot effect, and I'm sure that's what Hinch is hoping for here. No question, Plowman taking the short way around. Hinchcliffe does get a nice run at the exit of turn number four nudges in front but here comes plowman right back at the bottom of the racetrack meanwhile the interested spectator is the number seven machine of jk vernay now hinch hits the button at the exit of turn number two and slides in front of plowman he'll grab the second spot he's got some work to do to dial in on pippa man who's exiting turn number four as we speak while Hinscliffe is just now setting up for turn four pippa man's advantage is more than two and a half seconds as we complete lap 15 of 67 in the Drive Smart Buckle Up Kentucky 100 Firestone Indy Lights race from Kentucky Speedway. James Hinchcliffe is now a half a second in front of Martin Plowman, who runs third. J.K. Vernay is about two car lengths behind Plowman, running in fourth. Another 10 back to Dan Clark. Now here comes Charlie Kimball trying to get up inside of Brandon Wagner. This is a battle for sixth. They're going into three. So after backing up on the restart, Charlie Kimball's car is starting to come back to him. He's going to go to the inside, and they're going to run side by side down the main straightaway. Yakuman with some trouble in turn number four. That allowed the number 22 machine of Adrian Campos Jr. to close. We'll check back in on that battle now involving Brandon Wagner and Charlie Kimball. It settles out just a little bit with Kimball to the advantage of the exit of turn number two. Dan Clark running by himself in the fifth position. Pippa Man now opening up about a straightaway lead on James Hinchcliffe, who started to pull away suddenly from Martin Plowman. Plowman washes up a bit of the exit of turn number four. Vernay, for now, can't take advantage of it, but that battle for third tries to tighten up a little bit now as they set up for turn number one. Martin Plowman leading J.K. Vernay. Again, that's the battle for third place. Let's check in on Pitt Road with Jake Query. I just wanted to make sure that we were clear about the fact, Kevin, or that I got it out, that all three drivers have been released from that early incident. That included Philip Major, who got uh, by and got on the golf cart while we were talking or while I was talking to Stephen Wilson. But that is the good news. All three drivers involved, Philip Major, Stephen Wilson, and Daniel Harrington, have been cleared from the infield medical care center. And while the cars are heavily, heavily damaged for all three, all three drivers are okay. Battle for third place now as J.K. Vernay goes to the outside of Martin Plowman. All of a sudden, he hit the button down the main straightaway the last time. He works to the high side of Plowman. Plowman tries to come storming back to the bottom. Looks like he'll lift a little bit to keep the car from washing out. That allows Vernay to grab the spot. Now Vernay will try to put James Hinchcliffe in his crosshairs as they both scream across the start-finish line. Meanwhile, back up front, it is all Pippa Man. And that number 11 white machine, Pippa Man trying to lead from post to post here and uh, pick up her first career win in the Firestone and Delight Series. Adrian Campos Jr. just picked up another spot, getting around Brandon Wagner. He's running seventh. That's where he started. So far, it's been all Pippa Man starting from the pole for the second time this season, leading laps for the second week in a row. She did not be, was not able to finish the job at Chicagoland, losing the third closest race in Firestone Indy Lights history to James Hinchcliffe. Here, she leads by nearly three seconds on Hinchcliffe. J.K. Vernay is another second and a half back running third. Martin Plowman is fourth, five seconds off the lead, four tenths off of J.K. Vernay. Dan Clark running fifth at Kentucky Speedway. Chicagoland was the first time she was credited with ever leading a race, and she led those 35 laps, as you mentioned. She wasn't credited with leading a lap at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway after she set on the pole there because she crashed in turn one, and boy, how dejected she was. And again, a wrist injury a little over a month ago, and she drove with it and somehow soldiered home. But uh, she's had a handful of top tens this season in the last two events. Mid-Ohio, a fifth-place finish and a second-place finish at uh, Chicagoland. Pippa Mann has had a strong, strong finish to the season. She crosses the line, finishing lap number 22 of 67. Now here's Hinchcliffe, and the advantage continues to get larger. 3.1 seconds is the lead for Pippa Mann. She's on the backstretch nearly midway through as Hinchcliffe will exit turn number two, and it's almost as big of an advantage for second position. J.K. Vernay is nearly two seconds behind Hinchcliffe, running in third. Could have a battle developing there. Martin Plowman has a little bit of momentum.
catching up with Vernet. Here comes Plowman around turn number four, and he is right behind Vernet. He goes to the high side of J.K. Vernet, cast a shadow against oh. the wall. They almost touch as they set up for turn number one. Plowman moved down a little bit and had not cleared Vernet. That's what spotters are for. Vernet stays glued to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll pull back even now at the midway point of the back straightaway. Side by side right behind them is the battle for fifth position. Dan Clark is on the high side. Charlie Kimball is on the low side. Kimball noses in front in the short shoot between three and four. Around turn number four, they're still hooked up side by side, they nearly touched. touch out of number four, and they're at the stripe nearly even with Dan Clark just in front, maintaining that position for fifth. They will still say side by side. Battle for fifth position. Dan Clark outside in the blue car. The green and white car is Charlie Kimball, and Clark noses in front down the back stretch, but Kimball is not going to give up the spot, and he'll nose back in front coming around three. I don't think there's any question they banged wheels last time through four. Certainly the folks next door in race control noticed that. A little more room this time between Kimball and Dan Clark as they cross the start-finish line, setting up for turn number one. Charlie Kimball has the spot over Dan Clark. Again, this is the battle for fifth. It's been a dandy. Meanwhile, James Hinchcliffe is all by his lonesome on the racetrack. Bad news is he's in second place. J.K. Vernet has started to stretch out his advantage a bit now over the car of Martin Plowman as they make their way across the start finish line. But back up front with 26 laps completed. It is all Pippa Man, and Pippa Man is now starting to dial in on the number 18 machine of Rodrigo Barbosa, who's running in the 11th position. She's within about a straightaway of putting Barbosa a lap down. So Pippa Man has dominated from start to uh, near the midpoint of this event. We're not there yet. We're working on lap number 27 of 67. Man at the line is in front by more than three seconds. The margin stays steady this time. 3.34 seconds on James Hinchcliffe. Another 3.3 seconds back to J.K. Vernet. A second back to Martin Plowman running in fifth. And another half a second back to Charlie Kimball running one through five. Six through ten is Dan Clark, Adrian Campos Jr., Gustavo Jacobin, Brandon Wagner, Ari Leyendijk Jr. And rounding out the field still co uh, competing is Rodrigo Barbosa in the 11th spot. He's 18 seconds off the lead, still on the lead lap. You know, Sam Schmidt Motorsports, uh, the dominant team of the Firestone Indy Lights series in the first several years of the series' existence, and over the past couple of seasons, uh, that uh, championship caliber team uh, challenged a bit by AFS, what was AGR, now Andretti Autosports, with the likes of Rafa Matos and Ari Leyendijk Jr. and Sebastian Saavedra, but uh, boy, Kevin, they have bounced back this season uh, with a vengeance, and I, I, I really don't think that going into the season, uh, if anyone would have told you that J.K. Bernay, an unknown Frenchman, would battle for Rookie of the Year or the points championship and be as dominant as he had, I'm not sure anyone would have believed that. I, I, I think you, you, you have to look at the fact that he's piloting that number seven Lucas Oil machine that uh, Alex Lloyd was so dominant in a couple of years ago. But, uh, you know, you go back to the Firestone Freedom 100. Wade Cunningham was in the 77 machine. He won that race. And then the second half of the season that Pippa Mann has had, uh, I, I think uh, whatever ills they may have had the past couple of years, they certainly in the offseason worked to solve them. And it's been a great, great 2010 campaign for Sam Schmidt Motorsports. Most of us in America knew nothing of J.K. Vernet when this season started, but whoever is in the number seven Lucas Oil car for right. Sam Schmidt Motorsports, you want to learn something about. You, you take notice. Uh, if Sam Schmidt hires you, then you obviously have some abilities, and J.K. Vernet has backed that up. And now as he looks to move to the next level, it will be interesting to see what develops here near the end of this season towards next season. It's no secret that Randy Bernard would love to have a ladder system with rewards for the champion at each step. It's not done yet. I don't know if it will get done, but the goal is to have something that will help the lights champion secure a ride for the IZOD IndyCar Series. Uh, but you have to find the backing to be able to do that. So that's one of the ideas that's out there. Same thing also apply, applies from USF 2000 to Star Mazda. They already have that, but we'd like to see something from Star Mazda to Firestone Indy Lights. And, and Randy Bernard spoke of that recently. Uh, he wants to see uh, more of a direct connection from Star Mazda to Firestone Indy Lights. Working on lap number 34 of 67. So we're at the midpoint now. Pippa Man leading by 3.6 seconds on James Hinchcliffe. 
than Jake Avernay, Martin Plowman, and Charlie Kimball here at Kentucky Speedway. Watching the battle for ninth shape up into turn number one. Shadows starting to get cast just a little bit. We're talking about the uh, 32 machine of Brandon Wagner and the number 24 machine of Ari Leyendyke Jr. Dan Clark running just in front of them. Ari Leyendyke taking wide entries into the turn. Hoping to get a run off the bank. This time he goes a little higher. He has plenty of grip in turn number four. Starts to pull up a little bit on Wagner. Now shoots in behind him. Wants to get a little bit of a slip screen and maybe work his way around him. But now Brandon Wagner is going to tiptoe to the high side of Dan Clark in turn number one. Not sure what's happened to Dan Clark. He was running in the top five for the first half of this race. But now he's back there trying to hang on to the eighth position right now. And Brandon Wagner has a run on him coming into turn number three. Clark's going to maintain the position for the moment. Up front, we still see Pippa Mann by a wide margin, 3.7 seconds on James Hinchcliffe. J.K. Vernay is third, but after that, it's getting a little bit tighter. Martin Plowman is in fourth, about 10 car lengths behind. And now we see Adrian Campos Jr. on the move, going to the outside of Charlie Kimball down the bat stretch. This is a battle for sixth position. Make that fifth position. And he's going to grab the spot for now to the high side in turn number four. It's been a good second half of the campaign for Adrian Campos Jr. Uh, he has put together a string of top tens, most recently eighth at Chicagoland, seventh at Infineon, sixth at Mid-Ohio. He's in the identically prepared uh, machine to James Hinchcliffe, the number two and the 22. Our teammates, Campos Jr., works around the high side of Rodrigo Barboza. Now he really starts to dial in on Martin Plowman. Looks like he wants to shoot his way past Plowman in turn number three. Plowman on the low side, Campos Jr. on the high side, and Campos Jr. is going to motor right by him without much difficulty. By the time they get to exit of turn number four, Adrian Campos Jr. now has worked his way up to the fourth position, but Martin Plowman's not ready to give it up, Mark. Plowman goes to the high side slides down about a half a groove doesn't tuck in right behind him wants to be wary of leaving the bottom of the racetrack open for the ever lurking Charlie Kimball in that 26th machine they're working their way through turn number three the yellow and white machine is Adrian Campos Jr. and then that uh, orange and red machine is being piloted by of course Martin Plowman and then uh, Charlie Kimball is in that green and orange and white machine as they work their, work, work their way through turn number two. Let's go to pit road. Nick Yeoman. Owner uh, for Pippa Mann, who's, you know, nice and, 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 you know, really stretching this lead out. It was 3.1 seconds. Looks like she has it up to 3.7, 3.8. How impressed have you been with her today? Well, I think she's got a lot of confidence right now, and uh, that's often, oftentimes all you need. Cars off is a solid car. Sat on the pole at the speedway, and I think last week we talked about the fact that she was, it was her epiphany, you know, she'd never led a race before, and uh, she led with uh, with Trent last week, and we had quite a bit of time in the, in the shop this week to be able to analyze the tapes from last week. And, um, we talked about a lot of things that she might have to do here, but she's not having to do it. I mean, the car's just on rails right now, and uh, I think, you know, as long as we don't get a yellow flag and turn things up, we have got a pretty good run to it. Now, you mentioned the confidence factor, and, and as a former driver, you know about it too. How, what have you seen from her in the last couple of weeks? Because she's really been putting some strong performances together. Well, from day one, when she sat in that car and tested on the oval, she just thought it was fantastic. It fit like a glove, and really, I think she's got some excellent people around her. Uh, Kent Boyer, engineer. She's uh, been working really hard, and the guys have... Uh, Put a lot of hours, kept the car really smooth, and, and uh, now she's getting the job done. That's Sam Schmidt, the car owner for Pippa Man, the current leader, Jake. Nick, I was just talking actually with Mark Moore of Team Moore Racing and Extreme Coil, of course, the owner for James Hinchcliffe and Adrian Campos Jr. And right now he's got his hands full on the radio. He didn't want to necessarily talk, but he did tell me what they're trying to do is get Campos Jr. right up there because he said Pippa Man's got really strong legs right now. He's not so sure they've got anything for that number 11 machine, but they feel like if they can get Adrian Campos Jr. into that third spot, right behind James Hinchcliffe, then perhaps they could do something as teammates to try to push Hinch up towards the front. But right now, he was honest in admitting Pippa Man's car awfully, awfully strong. Kevin, I'm a little surprised. I, I, I don't think that we've had an opportunity to see the Firestone and Delight series on one of these one and a half mile ovals uh, in, in which the field is, uh, is, is so spread out. I mean, typically, uh, pretty close quarters racing and uh, we've got a couple of drivers who are clearly hooked up in comparison to the rest of the field 
talking about Pippa Man and James Hinchcliffe. I mean, they almost look like it's a test session now among the top two drivers. We have not seen that much this season with uh, drivers just getting out and running away. Now, we have seen it at different times in the past, but so far it is all Pippa Man. And, and James Hinchcliffe is in a second class all by himself. There are three different races going on. Pippa right. Man, James Hinchcliffe running a second race, and then everybody else. But even as we say that, it's really spread out throughout the rest of this field. It's uh, it's pretty straggled out right now. Well, we are working on lap number 46. Pippa Man with a lead of uh, a little over four seconds over James Hinchcliffe. He has a lead of about five seconds over J.K. Vernet. The third place car of J.K. Vernet is over 9.5 seconds behind the leader. Almost 10 seconds back is Campos Jr. Martin Plowman in fifth place is over 11 seconds back. Jake Query on pit road. Keep in mind, guys, when looking at that number two machine of James Hinchcliffe, this is a young man who, while he would love to get up there towards the front and challenge Pippa Man, almost as critically at this point is managing to finish this race. And that's not a knock on him. We saw, of course, him get a win just a week ago. But keep in mind that a year ago, it was two laps from the finish when Hinch did something that occasionally he will do, and that was just have a momentary lapse that led to a spin two laps from the finish. It cost him four spots on the grid a year ago. So James Hinchcliffe, of course, wants to be aggressive and get up towards the front and challenge for that win. No question about that. But at the same time, you've got to figure he's also got to stay focused and just making sure to bring in that number two car home and getting what points he can out of a podium finish. He's third in the season in terms of laps led, James Cliff. James Cliff, as we said earlier, he's led 116 laps over the course of four races. Bernay is first. Uh, he's led uh, five times for a total of 172 laps. Hinchcliffe led but three laps at Chicago. 29 of those were paced by Martin Plowman and Pippa Man paced 35 of them. Pippa has already exceeded that. And as we mentioned earlier, those 35 laps led at Chicago land. Uh, the only time that she's led in her Firestone Indy Lights career. So she's uh, piled on the points there and is going to climb uh, up among the leaders in terms of laps led in just uh, the last couple of races. And uh, you talk about momentum, Kevin, uh, what she's been able to pull off over the last couple of races. If she can hold on to this momentum for a month or so and take it into Homestead Miami Speedway, it could greatly enhance her chances of at the very least getting a, a solid opportunity to compete in the Indianapolis 500 in 2011. That's the specific goal right now. And while it's not going as well as she would like in the championship, she can finish the season on a high note and a win would go a long way towards helping her credibility of getting a seat in an IZOD IndyCar Series race or the entire season. We have completed lap 50 of 67 here at Kentucky Speedway in Firestone Indy Lights. Pippa Mann leads by nearly five seconds looking for her first win. James Hinchcliffe runs second. Then J.K. Vernay is nearly five and a half seconds behind Hinchcliffe. Adrian Campos Jr. running in fourth. Martin Plowman is in fifth. That battle for third has been raging for a while with Campos Jr. Right on the rear wing, tucked up on J.K. Vernay. He's tried to pull alongside a couple of times. Now Vernay is back in front by a car length. The battle for third, the battle for fifth. Both pretty good nose-to-tail battles as Adrian Campos Jr. gets a nice run of the shadows of the grandstand in turn number one. He works to the high side. Kimball now falls behind uh, Martin Plowman by about four car lengths at the exit of turn number two. A high exit for Adrian Campos Jr. out of two, uh, turn number two. He'll tuck that yellow and white machine behind. Now run about a half a groove higher at the exit of turn number four. Hopes to tuck in right behind him and get a bit of a slingshot effect. But uh, the seven machine stays a little bit higher on the racetrack as they make their way into turn number one again. The yellow and white machine dances to the high side of J.K. Vernay. Will he be able to make the pass? Eh, not for now. Probably tuck in behind him at the exit of turn number two. And keep in mind, J.K. Vernay can wrap up the championship by finishing where he runs right now. He's in third. One more race to go after this from Homestead Miami Speedway in uh, just under a month on October 2nd. Wade Cunningham won here a year ago under caution. Sebastian Saavedra finishing second. Dylan Battistini won two years ago by eight one hundredths of a second over James Davison with Ari Leindyke Jr. finishing third. I saw Battistini today. Uh, here. He's been here this week and he competed last week for the first time this season. And lights. So I'm talking with a lot of car owners. Uh, good conversation it looked like with AJ Foyt. Can't read too much into it because everyone's going to talk with everyone and just see what kind of opportunities are around. Among the other winners we've seen over the years here, Hideki Mudo beat Alex Lloyd in 2007, both competing 
in the IZOD IndyCar Series race this evening. Jay Howard in 2006 won here by one one hundredth of a second. Travis Gregg, PJ Chesson, Jeff Simmons, AJ Foyt the fourth, the other winners in Firestone Indy Lights at Kentucky Speedway. And they've always had great racing here. There's no doubt about that. Well, uh, uh, not really a long and storied history, but certainly uh, quite a history in open wheel racing since this fabulous Kentucky Speedway opened its doors in both the Firestone Indy Lights and the IZOD IndyCar Series. And uh, we expect another chapter uh, in that book to be written tonight as uh, we'll have the 200th event of the IZOD IndyCar Series for you. And we look forward to bringing it to you. Should be a great one with Ed Carpenter, your pole sitter for Panther Racing. There was an interesting uh, decision there by Campos Jr. He lost a little bit of ground as Vernay was coming up on the lapped car of Rodrigo Barbosa. Vernay went to the low side. Barbosa has been drifting up high and letting everyone go behind. But Campos Jr. elected to go on the high side and lost about two car lengths. So now Campos Jr. is about five, six car lengths. And now, again, another pair of cars will split Rodrigo Barbosa on the backstretch with Plowman going high, Kimball going low. Plowman right now has the advantage for fifth place, and Kimball is right behind him by about a car length. So this is the best battle on the racetrack for the moment as Pippa Mann leads James Hinchcliffe up front by five and a half seconds. And she is starting to dial in on Dan Clark. She's within a straightaway of Dan Clark, who's running in the 10th position in that blue number 40 machine. Pippa Mann exiting turn number four as we speak. Pippa Mann with an outstanding run. She is about 10 laps and nine laps away from Victory Lane here at Kentucky Speedway. Pippa Mann is not one in Firestone Indy Light. She is in excellent position to get it done tonight. Barring a mistake, she's hoping that it stays green. That battle for fifth position continues to rage with Plowman leading by a car length. Less than that on Charlie Kimball. They've been battling throughout the race. They are teammates. And now Kimball loses a little bit of ground coming out of turn number two. And Gustavo Jakobin has a run on Charlie Kimball. So Plowman is safe in that position. And Kimball is going to possibly lose a spot to Jakobin. The battle is for sixth position. Kimball on the low side. Jakobin on the high side. They come down the main straightaway almost side by side. Sebastian Saavedra is enjoying this side by side race because that allows him to pull away a little bit. Kimball has the bottom of the racetrack. Jakobin to the high side. Usually the car, the exit at turn number two to the high side gets a bit of a run down the banking. We see Jakobin start to pull up a little bit. Now Gustavo has to make a decision. Where will they catch Martin Plowman? And will it be to his advantage to be to the high side or the low side? Where will Plowman go to either benefit him or cost him valuable time? Kimball might make that a moot point as he comes storming back to the bottom of the racetrack. They're still side by side, still about five car lengths behind Martin Plowman, who runs in the fifth position. Kimball and Jakobin continue to battle for sixth. Side by side, down the back stretch, coming out of two. Jakobin will nose in front, and he clears Kimball for a moment. Will he get down to the low side? Coming into number three, he will stay up high. Kimball on the low side. Jakobin has the position. Gustavo Jakobin has worked his way up to sixth place. Now he'll go to work on Martin Plowman, about three car lengths behind. Up ahead of them, still Adrian Campos Jr. and J.K. Vernay have run in this setup for 15 laps plus, separated by a car length or less than a car length. We are at the line now, five laps from completion at Kentucky Speedway for the Drive Smart Buckle Up Kentucky 100, and Pippa Mann is in control. You gotta believe she's pat that dashboard saying, come on, baby, stay together to the finish. Pippa Mann on the verge of her first win, came oh so close at Chicagoland Speedway one week ago, came up about three laps short, it's been an up-and-down season for Pippa Man, a pole sitter at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the month of May and the Firestone Freedom 100 crashed out in lap number one and had to suffer through a broken wrist and she missed mid-Ohio. Joined us in the broadcast booth. She came back strong and with a vengeance after that, Pippa Man trying to put together a strong finish to 2011 and get her way to victory lane here at Kentucky Speedway. Martin Plowman is backing up. He lost two spots. He's dropped from fifth to seventh as both Jakobin and Kimball get by him. Working on lap number 64 of 67. Pippa Man leads by more than six seconds. James Hinchcliffe working on lap 65 now. 6.3 seconds is the advantage. Jay Cabernet running in third. He is still just barely in front of Adrian Campos Jr. They're separated by less than a car length. 
But the story of the day has been Pippa Mann and Sam Schmidt Motorsports. She closes in on Dan Clark, who's running in the 10th position. Pippa Mann sees Dan Clark wash up the racetrack just a little bit. Clark doing the sportsman-like thing and giving Pippa Mann plenty of room to roam. Pippa clears turn number two and sets sail down the back straightaway, where she will encounter the 18 machine of Rodrigo Barbosa once more. She'll do so just about the apex at turn number three. Pippa Man coming around three goes to the low side of Barbosa. She's lapped Dan Clark now, so Man continues to dominate this race. She sees the white flag. She's less than a mile and a half away from her first win. Rodrigo Barbosa, not quite as sportsmanlike as Dan Clark as they made their way through turn number four. Pippa had to work a little harder to get past. She works her way to the midway point of the back straightaway, setting up for turn number three for the final time. Pippa Mann closes it on Victory Lane at her 26th Firestone and Delight start. She finished fifth just a couple of weeks ago at Mid-Ohio. Second, uh, make that at Infineon. Second in Chicagoland. Pippa Mann is now a first-time winner in Firestone Indy Lights, winning the Drive Smart Buckle Up Kentucky 100 at Kentucky Speedway. James Hinchcliffe is second. J.K. Vernay is your series champion. He finishes third. 